people of the internet, how's everyone doing today? I'm doing all right, thanks for asking. Uh, today has been an adventure. Florida currently has a cold front coming through and it is very windy outside, so I'm not entirely sure uh, how well the audio is going to pick up whenever I do eventually go outside to the range. Um, <laughs> I can't find my little pieces of torn up jeans that I normally cover the camera with, so I cut up this piece of sock, it's the little elastic part, so I'm going to use this to cover the microphone in hope of covering as much wind noise as possible. I have no idea how well this is going to work, this is always some sort of experimentation, but hopefully this works at least decent enough not to annoy people. Alright, now as you can see I'm not in my typical backdrop. Uh, it might not be pretty, but this is the backdrop that I currently have. Uh, I'm currently doing some renovations in my uh, usual area, so the place is kind of a mess and I was not able to comfortably record there. so. We're here instead. Okay, so let's go on to the topic of the video. Uh, I got myself another Mosin Noggin. It's just a 9130. It is actually one year uh, later than the manufacturer of the 9130 that I already own. Uh, same manufacturer, they're both Ishvesk manufacturer, uh, almost the same year. Uh, very, very similar rifles. Some people are going to ask, why the hell would I get more than one 9130, especially if they're both, you know, round receiver, Ishvesk Arsenal made rifles. One, one was the price. I got this, I got this rifle at a pretty good price because it was Black Friday sale and I know the, the person that sold it to me and we normally work out some fairly decent prices on that. So, I doubt he's going to watch this, but in the event that he does, thank you for that. Alright, so first was the price. Second, the handguard coloration is, is really different from, from anything that I own. Uh, it's, it's just unique because it's definitely a replaced part, but I'll show that off here in a second. And the third, and this is the most significant part, the Mosin that I just bought has not been refurbished. <laughs> uh, the 9130 that I have has been refurbished and, you know, it's nice and clean and and it's been redone and, and you, you can tell that it's been refurbished. It's even got the refurbished marks on it. The 9130 that I just bought not too terribly long ago has not been refurbished. It is exactly how it was whenever it came out of the factory and fought through the trenches of World War II. It's even got the military cartouche still on the buttstock. And I have searched this thing up, down, left, right, trying to find some sort of refurbishment marks, but there just aren't any. I kind of knew that it wasn't going to be refurbished. Uh, the cartouche is a good indication of that. A lot of times they'll sand that off. Uh, the finish on the stock is very crude. Uh, just, just everything about the rifle. It, it does not scream refurbishment. And like I said, I've, I've looked over every square inch of this thing. I have not found a refurbished mark. So, yeah, I have an unfinished or unrefurbished uh, 9130. So. That was another buying point for me. All right, so this right here is the Mosin that I've had for a long time now. Uh, 9130, it's been refurbished, no cartouche down here. It does have burn marks on the stock down here. And I believe this right here is a piece of shrapnel. <laughs> At least that's what, that's what I call it. I mean, I know it's been refurbished, but I still like to call it shrapnel just for comedy's sake. Uh, the finish on this stock is, is phenomenally gorgeous. Uh, it you can see right through it down to the wood graining and it looks deep. It's it's definitely beautifully done. I would love to see this finish done whenever this was first refurbished and then sold to the civilian market. Now over time this rifle right here has been dinged and scratched and brutalized and all kinds of stuff like that, so it is what it is, but a lot of that was before my time. However, a lot of that was also during my time. <laughs> The cleaning rod on this rifle right here is also broken, so it's just the the threads on the rifle or the threads on the cleaning rod have broken off, so it's just like half a thread's worth threaded in there, but it's enough to hold it in, at least for presentation purposes. And this is the 9130 that I just picked up. This is the unrefurbished one. Now obviously the upper handguard has been replaced, and that right there was honestly the main buying point for me just because I think it looks fantastic. It's just just the two-tone coloration is really really cool looking. But other than that, uh, it has not been refurbished and I, I love it. You could, I, I'll bring you guys back here in just a second to see the military cartouche. Um, 
you can definitely tell that Russia had some serious shit going down in 1943 as compared to 1942. 1942 was a big year, but 1943 Russia was like, we need Mosin Noggins, we need them now. Bring out as many Mosin as possible. And the quality of the Mosin Noggin from 1943 is definitely of a lower quality than the Mosin Noggin from 1942. However, I will acknowledge that that is most likely uh, due to the uh, refurbishment. However, I will also point out that the machine work itself is actually nicer on the 1942 than the 1943, and you can really feel it whenever you cycle the bolt handle on the two. There's a, a rather significant machine difference there. Alright, as I said, I will go ahead and bring you guys back here to see the military cartouche right there on the buttstock. I hope that it shows up half decent on camera. I'm going to try several angles in an attempt to get it seen. But it is definitely there. And there is no refurbishment marks anywhere on the rifle. Now there is some sort of mark right here, but that's definitely not a refurbished mark. It doesn't have the uh, center line going through it. There's a number two on the rifle up here. I have no idea what that means. And odd as it is, where there normally is an import mark on this Mosin, there is not. We instead have MK1211. I'm not sure what that means, but <laughs> it is what it is. Up here we got 1943, some crudely stamped uh, serial number manufacturers. A far more crude Ishvesk mark than there is on the 1942 version. And you can see a little Soviet Union symbol symbol there. One thing that I do want to point out, uh, however, this is not uh, because of the manufacturing or anything. My old Mosin that I've had forever, the barrel on it is like gone. <laughs> like it is horrendously pitted to the where to the point to where you not only can't see rifling, but like the barrel is no longer smooth. Somebody. Like, there, there was definitely corrosive ammo fired through this thing, and the rifle was not cleaned for a significant amount of time. So, the, the Mosin I just got has, you know, better rifling in it. <laughs> oh, God. I wonder how well I could actually pick up the Mosin barrel in this one. Let, let's at least give it a, an attempt. <laughs> All right, I have no idea how well this is going to show up on camera, but hopefully you guys can see at least a little bit about how horrendously pitted <laughs> this barrel is. Now, my old 9130 isn't pitted to the points where it would be dangerous to fire. If that was the case, I'd probably swap out the barrels. The only reason I haven't done that yet is because, <laughs> well, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> uh... I don't care. <laughs> that's that's as simple as it gets. I don't care. At 50 yards, the accuracy is not diminished enough to really significantly care. I'm too blind to fire out to any real yardage without some sort of optic. That's just my handicap. That's how I was born. All right, well, I've talked about these long enough. Let's go ahead and walk out to the gun range. And hopefully I can fire uh, some rifles and not have too terribly much wind noise. I have my sock that I'll stick over the microphone and we'll see where it goes from there. So let's go do that whenever I fire. Now I have not fired this, uh, this unrefurbished Mosin Noggin yet. So I do hope that the headspace is good. I've not heard of a Mosin Noggin with improper headspace before. They, they seem to hold up headspace really, really well, so fingers crossed that that's the case here. I do not have a gauge to test it, though. However, I did buy it from a, <laughs> from a legitimate gun dealer, so despite the fact that it's used, I'm more than sure that they at least test fired it. Alright, enough talk. Let's head out to the range. I've got me some very bare and basic 7.62 by 54 rimmed. It says made in Russia. I'm not seeing any sort of manufacturer on it. Uh, I got this stuff very, very cheaply. This is just lead core ammunition. It is that green steel lacquered, or that green lacquered steel case ammunition. Nothing, nothing special 
at all about it, but it should serve its purpose. So let's head out to the gun range. All right, fingers crossed that this sock works well enough to at least not make this an annoying experience. I've got the camera positioned behind a tree and the wind seems to be mostly coming from this direction. So hopefully we don't have too much wind noise, but man, it sure is windy out here. Let's see. I mean, we might, we might. All right, yeah, it's, it's kind of in a vacuum, but not really. Hopefully the sock and the position of the camera makes it good enough to where I can actually record something. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire the Mosin Noggin that I've had for as long as I can remember. <laughs> I've had it for a very long time. I fired this Mosin Noggin multiple times, uh, but it's the only 9130 that I've ever fired. So I'm gonna fire that one and then I'm gonna fire this unrefurbished 9130 and I'm gonna kind of feel the two out. It sure is windy out here, guys. <laughs> Really windy. <clears throat> Fingers crossed that so you guys can even hear me talk with that sock. If not, I'll have to uh, voice over. I haven't done that in a while. Feels like a most noggin, all right. Okay, let's go ahead and swap over to the unrefurbished one. <laughs> All right, since this is my first time firing this one, I'm going to load one single round, just in case the rifle explodes on me. I don't foresee that happening, but just in case. I will note right off the back that the wind is terrible. I will note right off the back that the uh, spring tension on this one is far greater than on that one. Maybe this one's less wore out, but it is stiffer to open against spring tension. <laughs> All right, that is definitely a Mosin Noggin. Seems to fire and eject all right, but this one right here is like really quite a deal rougher than that one. The unrefurbished versus the refurbished. The trigger pull especially, the trigger pull on this one really is like dragging a grand piano down some gravel that like you do that for about four hours and you will have officially cycled a Mosin Noggin. It is not great, but it is still wonderful. It is both. It is both. Seems accurate. the hell's that smell? <laughs> this thing has a really weird smell to it. Alright, I'm going to load up a few more rounds and we'll launch them down range and we'll see what happens. I can't get over the smell of this thing. What the hell is that smell? I also want to point out that the machine work on this thing kind of makes it look like it's got check ring on the receiver. It really is interesting looking. There we go. Let's see how well that picks up on camera. It's just, it's just cool looking on that one. This 9130 doesn't have that. At least I don't think so. Oh no, not nearly as rough. <laughs> I do hope that the wind noise is not so bad on that camera. Fingers crossed. A lot of it will be edited out, but fingers crossed. I can only work so much magic. 
All right, we're gonna load four rounds into this one. All right, well, this unrefurbished Mosin Noggin is definitely a 9130. Uh, the two feel very, very similar, that's for sure. However, the unrefurbished one definitely uh, is, is rougher to handle. Uh, it's got a lot more spring tension, too. The spring might have been replaced at some time, but it's got a lot more spring tension in it. It's also a lot grittier than the refurbished one that I have. I will point out, though, that the unrefurbished one, for some reason, seems to have less recoil than the refurbished one. I don't know why. <laughs> they both seem to weigh the same. They're both the same length. Maybe it's because the barrel on this one is wore out? How would that attribute to recoil? But this one seems to have a little less recoil than that one right there. Or maybe I'm attributing that to the amount of shock wave that comes out. I will however point out that the refurbished one, for obvious reasons, is far more pleasing to handle. This one right here, the unrefurbished one, uh, less recoil, seems to be accurate, uh, but <laughs> the refurbished one is definitely easier to cycle. That is for certain, and the trigger on the refurbished one is far far nicer than the unrefurbished one. Alright, well, there we go. I've checked out a 9130 right from right from World War II, unrefurbished. I feel complete. The wind is really bad today. I hope that it does not, you know, turn out too terribly. Alright, I actually have another video that I'm gonna make, so I'm gonna go make that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just gonna finish up this one. I'm going to say thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, go ahead and mash that subscribe button because I do this kind of stuff all the time. You can see uh, my car out there with my plasma screen television. Uh, that's my evidence of me doing this literally all the time. Uh, if you like the video, do me a favor and mash that like button. It really does help out. Uh, go ahead and check out the Patreon page. I've started doing Q&As for people that ask me uh, questions. A lot of questions are repeated. That's whenever I decided to start doing Q&As. However, I have gotten some very hilarious and interesting questions as well, so those also go up on the Q&As. You don't have to be a Patreon to uh, ask a question or to go to Patreon and look at the answers, so... It, I'm basically just doing that for fun. It, it's a good time. I love answering some of the questions that people ask, and... Oh god, you guys ask some very interesting stuff. <laughs> Hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad for the next video. Uh, hopefully it wasn't so bad for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and go grab some additional stuff because I got a lot of, of guns to shoot today, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna go take care of that. You people go off. Have a fantastic day. My day's gonna be fantastic. I hope your day's fantastic as well. Wow, that sun is like right in the wrong spot. Ah, my eyes. Bye, guys. <laughs>
shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.